Hey everybody, how are you going? Steve here. Welcome back to Command Center Wargaming. So today, we're going to have a little bit of a chat about that Ultramarines game I played with Matty on Sunday. Uh, it was quite an interesting game. I think the list is pretty strong. Uh, I, I was even surprised with the results. Um, but we'll have a look at that uh, later. I'll put some. Uh, I'll put the list up in the video, or maybe I'll chuck it in the description or something like that. Let you guys see it, um, so you could comment on it. Let me know what you think and that. But uh, I just thought what I'd do is I just uh, airbrush this uh, Imperial Knight. I've got him pre-shaded, um, and hopefully you can see that here. He's, he's been pre-shaded, and I'm just going to go through. I'm going to put like a bit of a base coat on him. And so I thought I'd just have a chat about it like while I was making a video. So sorry about the, just the silly angle here, but I just thought that, uh, and the mess, because I've been all over the place uh, last week, you know, doing assemblies, doing uh, games and lists and stuff. So I just thought I'd basically go through, spray this up while we had a chat about it. Um, so firstly, I, I didn't want to make like a crazy battle report video about it because like, well I never wanted to do that anyway, but I did a bit of filming on it and it turns out the camera I used, I don't think it was a very good camera. Uh, the autofocus is a little bit sluggish on it, so uh, I might have to look into that. And uh, the footage that I got, I wasn't quite happy with. So I will just take some stills and as I'm talking about it, what I'll do is I'll flick them up here, up on the channel and um, flick them up in, uh, in front of you there as we're going, as we're talking about it. So, um, so yeah, but first of all, let me just talk about this little bit of pre-shading here. Um, look, I was going to do a full-blown tutorial on it, but I can if you want. Drop a comment in the link, uh, in the comments down below. But uh, I've already showed you some airbrushing techniques and that. So, you know, the rest of it's just a process. So, what it's all about is uh, pre-shading the way I do it is anyway, um, is that I go through and I, I pre-shade the model. So I'll start with three colors. I'll start with a black, I'll start with a gray, I'll start with a white. Now, truth be told, what I actually do, I don't start with three colors at all. Um, I, use a, I use a base black, and then I will use a, like I will add white to that, and then ramp it up into a gray, and then gradient it up, so that you get like really nice sort of blending um, with, your, with your tones. And what it does is it, it's kind of like, yeah, if anyone knows anything about visual effects, it's kind of like ambient occlusion. It sort of fakes the shadow, bakes the shadow into the model. Um, and what happens is there is that uh, the model, once it's pre-shaded, you then just go over it with like one layer, right? So with airbrushing, what a lot of people do is, and I do this too, depending on the model. Uh, basically, the uh, what people do, and I'll just, just wait for that compressor just to stop. Uh, it'll just stop in a second. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to turn it off. It will stop, but it will start back up again. So I'm just going to just going to turn it off. So um, so basically, uh, so what a lot of people do is they start with colors, and then they go through and they just start like you know spraying, and then they might add white to the color, sort of build it up, um, or they might just go through and just change colors and mix colors and all that. And I do do that. I do that a lot, like depending on the model. But models that are fairly sizable, like this guy, or models that uh, I know I'm going to want a lot of shading on, or models that I feel as though are, uh, yeah, they're going to be a little bit battle torn and stuff like that, um, then I will go through and I will, I will do pre-shading on it. Uh, now, it might be a little bit hard to see here in the video, but I'll show you from the top. Um, you can probably see that there's, a, like, there's white, then there's grey, and then there's uh, black. And it all feathers off into a gradient, like, really, really nicely, all right? So, um, that's what that's about. And, yeah, but now the trick is to it, though, uh, is that when you go over it with your base color, you actually have to go through and you, you have to make that, you have to make that base color, like, really, really uh, thin. But then at, at the same time, it can't be too thin, because if you make it too thin, then, you know, the paint's just going to run any, everywhere and all that kind of stuff. So, um, it is quite a tricky thing to get 100% right. And it is a little bit touch and go, um, but I should be fine. Uh, talking about it while on camera and then doing it, that's kind of another story. But uh, whatever, you know, I'll live. So, I've got a really cool hexagonal color pattern um, picked out for this guy. Uh, now, truth be told, uh, it is kind of a little bit... Uh, redundant doing the pre-shading on this model for two reasons. Number one, um, pre-shading best works with models that are 
light in colour, light in contrast, like the base coat, like yellows, light reds, that kind of stuff. Really awesome for like ochre, uh, ochre colours and that, like German tanks and stuff. Um, desert colours and that, like where the shading will push through the base coat. The darker the colour is, like say browns and blacks and things like that, um, the less it's going to work because it's just going to look black. It's just going to cancel out the black. Um, so you can still do it, but it's just not as good. So, for example, with this model, because I'm using like such extreme dark blue, which is imperial blue, which is a uh, very close to Cantor blue um, from Games Workshop, it's just that you're not going to see it as much. Um, and then because I'm going to be putting like hexagonal camouflage on top of it, which uh, which I kind of adaptively borrowed from Mech Warrior. Uh, so I can't say I completely invented it, I'll be honest. I saw it in Mech Warrior 3 and I was like, oh man, that's that's boss. And um, I'm going to do like a blue base coat on the night and then like a red uh, hexagonal layer of uh, camouflage and then a white hexagonal layer on the top of it. And because uh, I thought like, you know, uh, you know, being a close combat knight, he's a knight gallant. I kind of want him to be a little bit menacing as well. Um, I do like a lot of the schemes, other schemes for knights, like, you know, the uh, House Tyrell and, uh, you know, and, and all those other ones, the purple one, I really like those colours, but, you know, to be honest, like, I just want this guy to look, you know, sort of dark and menacing, and I might, I've got, like, a whole bunch of other knights here, I've got the Valiant, I've got the Castellan, I've got the other Questorus knights and stuff, like, four or five of them, so, um, so, you know, I, I will just go through and, uh, and do those, you know, the sort of house colours. I'm not too fussed about my knights being uh, being all the same colour because I usually don't just play like whole knight armies. I usually just sort of like have them in as a detachment. So it doesn't really matter too much um, for me anyway, but you know, all good. So, um, all right, so let's let's get started. I'll have a chat to you uh, while I'm doing this. So the game, the game went really, really good. Um, it went really, really good. And uh, we set up, and, and Maddie, Maddie had a pretty sizable force. Uh, and he had like a mix of chimeras, he had a mix of uh, what else did he have? He had the Shadow Sword, which was pretty brutal. Uh, and, um, and that was something I had to take out like straight away. Because, like, you know, as, as you can imagine, uh, what am I trying to talking and, and doing it at the same time? Gee, I've got to get used to that, guys. It's a new skill I have to master, I think. Um, so. Basically, uh, yeah, he, I knew I had to take the Shadow Sword out straight away, um, but, you know, I needed to be careful as well, because I didn't want to neglect, like, the rest of his army. And he had a lot of Elysium drop troops in there as well, uh, with hot, no, was it Elysium hot tr drop troops? I think it was just hot, hot shot Laz troopers he was deep striking somehow. I can't remember now, I'll show you the picture when it comes up. And, um, so they were going to come out, but they never got a chance to come down. My army, and this is like hopefully I don't list, uh, I don't uh, leave anything out. Sorry about the shaking, guys. Um, but you know, on camera, I know I said I wouldn't do it, but it's just a bit, you know, weird there. So my army consisted of, jeez, uh, that doesn't look too good, does it, guys? Uh, let me just do it like that. <laughs> so my, uh, it looks even worse. So look, my army consisted of uh, Gilliman. Then he was backed up by. 15 veterans, company veterans, not Stern Guard, not Vanguard veterans, company veterans with Storm Shields and Storm Bolters. So they're all doing four shots re-rolling with Gilliman and then the Storm Shields gave him a three up invulnerable save and also a two up armor save in cover and a three up generally. Now, that was sort of something I adapted off the aggressor list that we were talking about. And we're talking about the aggressor list and there, I think it was with, I can't remember who it was, on the channel, sorry. But we were having a convo about it. And um, the thing is with aggressors, they're very expensive. They are toughness five, but there's still only two wounds and they're three up save. So it's basically just like, you know, for that price, I can literally get like a, an invol. Uh, on a on a vanguard veteran, uh, not a vanguard, a vet company veteran, uh, for like cause they they cost like eighteen points each or something, right? Because you got to they're like fourteen base, and then you got to add like the two points for the storm bolter, and then the two points for the storm shield. So 
it's basically basically something uh, to do there. So that was awesome, and that was just like 190 points or something like that. Jeez, this is a wicked blue, guys. This is going to look really cool. Uh, I think I have to fit, thin it down just a little bit more, though. I don't have my Michael Jackson one glove on me either, so do I? Should I put my Michael Jackson one glove on? Yeah, I probably should. So basically, uh, yeah. So that was that, and then there was Gilliman. So and you think about this, right? So with the aggressors, those guys are re-rolling. Okay, so I'm getting the shots of aggressors and I can move, right? So it's kind of like, I get people saying, oh yeah, aggressors are the new meta and all this kind of crap. But guys, like, I don't like to just go with the meta. I like to make my own meta. I like to make my own armies. Sometimes they work. Um, sometimes they don't. But I have fun, like, doing my own armies. Like, I don't really see the point in just coming out and just copying someone's list, you know, like, what's the point? You know, if you're just going to go, you know, get the ICT champion list off, you know, off YouTube or something like that and just replicate it. Like, to me, it takes the fun out of building your own list and all this kind of stuff. So I wanted to sort of make my own, but there was a lot of tactical, there was a lot of stuff tactically in there that was, um, that was really good. So the other thing I did was I put three squads of snipers. One had a heavy bolt art so I can use the uh, Hellfire stratagem which essentially allowed me to use one command point, fire the heavy bolter, and do up to D3 mortal wounds. <laughs> Why not? So that helped me bring down the, uh, the, uh, the Bane, the, the Bane uh, Shadow Sword. And uh, so I had three of those, and then I had them backed up with Tigerius. So not Ti yeah, Tigerius is a librarian. And then I also had Sergeant Telemon, or Telmon, or whatever his name is. And what he was doing... He was like he was allowing uh, my snipers to be to be hitting on threes while they were moving because they're heavy weapons, right? So like a lot of people say, oh, he's cheap, but tell him on's crap. But you're not thinking about how to use him in synergy. So my my army list, my Ultramoon's army list, I have a rule, and that rule is is that if I'm going to take Gilliman and I'm going to list like the I'm, I'm going to um, you know invest the the 400 points to take Robbie G, then I, I want to make sure that that investment is is worth it. And I, I need to make sure that all of my army, well, this time I kind of broke the rule, but I, I kind of want to make sure that all of my army is in um, is covered by his rerolls. Sorry guys, I just have to be very careful here because I've, I've nearly got the mixture up, but I don't want to put in too much because otherwise I'm going to stuff the whole paint. Just thinning the paint down quite a bit here, guys. Um, it's already quite a nice consistency uh, because it's Vallejo model, but I, I re remember what I said. Um, it's got to be super duper, super duper alley uh thin, but not too thin. Uh, but what you want is like, usually when you're using airbrush, you, you want like a nice milky consistency. Um, in this case... I want like a little bit of milk, but like a little bit watery. So like a light white kind of consistency or like a, whatever you call like the, you know, like the light milk or whatever from where you're from. Here in Australia, we call it light white, you know. Um, but anyway, so, so I had that. Then I had, um, then I had a chapter ancient and he was brutal because, um, you know, you could just literally all these things on the board. You just shoot again. I had an apocryphy there. He was, I never got to use him though. Um, and then I had two squads of Devastators. Now, I did make an error. Um, so I had like one extra Devastator per squad because I forgot about the four man rule. I thought it was five man and Sergeant. Uh, so that was my mistake. But all I did was, is I, I just went through and when we realized I made that stuff up, it was just stupid stuff up guys. Like I know, but um, what, what I did was I just didn't shoot with like two of them the next turn, like the next, so the next, uh, the next block of units. So I just didn't shoot two and it evened out. So it wasn't a big deal. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I had two squads of, of them, but the thing is it could have just been three squads then. So it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, I would have like maybe taken out some company veterans or something and I would have put them in three squads. So at the end of the day, I mean, point for point, I'm pretty sure it was about the same. It's just that the squads were bigger than what they were. Um, and in actual fact, the ammunition cherub, like, would have got more shots anyway, like, in a small, in, 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 in a three, like, 
three units, not two units. So, but anyway, it was my mistake. I, I fully admit it. It was a bit of a noob mistake. Um, you know, Maddie was really cool with it, you know, and everything. Um, so, you know, he was really good, really good. Um, didn't come down to me too hard for making that mistake. He knows it's an honest mistake. But, um, you know, but when, uh, so yeah, and then, so the Devastators, and that was pretty much, oh, and then I had the Knight Gallant, right? So the Knight Gallant, he was using a, um, the, uh, what was that stratagem called? Sally Forth, so I saved him until the, uh, till the second turn. And then basically had it so that, uh, he was come in on the second turn, and I took him as House Crest, so, and I totally forgot, like, the Warlord traits and all that kind of stuff. I, you know, I should have read the Codex better, because, you know, I've got Knights, but I don't play them much. Um, and then, but, uh, so yeah, it doesn't matter, because the army was tabled before I even got to use the Knight anyway. Was that round one? <laughs> oh, well. Well, wow. okay, so this is just round one. Um, here are my Marines there. I managed to get initiative. Um, I've basically just destroyed uh, the Shadow Sword. I I've basically just destroyed, what, maybe a little bit over half your army? Just over a thousand points. So I've, I've basically destroyed just over a thousand points uh, in, turn, in turn one in the first battle round. Um, so Maddie's considering calling it, um, but I don't know. I sort of bit disappointed because I, I didn't get to bring my knight on the field. Um, but uh, I think that I could definitely say that this list has some merit. Uh, I'm not saying it's a perfect list to take, but yeah, I, I did make a mistake though uh, that Maddie pointed out. It didn't matter in the end because I just didn't like roll with like the next unit. But uh, yeah, I forgot that you could only have four heavy weapons in the Devastator squad and I had an extra heavy weapon. So it doesn't really matter because it just means I shot with like two less in the in the next uh in the next shooting thing. But um yeah so anyway that's the first round. We'll see how Maddie feels about it and uh I guess if you don't see any more of a video maybe uh yeah we might I don't know but that's it and that's how it went. Um super fantastic. Um so I need to remember for next time I might actually take House Tyrell or Tyron or whatever you call it, um, just because they they have that they have the reroll charges and they have the attack again and they have the use three dice to charge instead of two, which is massive um, coming in from a, a six inch from the edge uh, second turn deep strike assault, you know, because you're not guaranteed to get the charge and like I was charging a shadow sword and like. You know, and admittedly, like, Maddie decided not to play on, um, but we had another go, and then it was just, it was the same thing, and, um, I'll show you the photos, uh, in the, in here, and, uh, and basically what happened was, is that, uh, we then decided, look, let's just play, like, a little bit of a duel between the, um, between the, between the Shadow Sword and between the, uh, the Imperial Knight, just to see you know, like, how it would have gone. Like, just out of interest, you know, to see to see how it would have gone. And it turned out, like, I mean, I stuffed up my stratagems and that, um, but Matty, you know, he was very tactical with it, and he did get really lucky on his rolls. Um, but he ended up destroying the, the, knight, uh, the knight Gallant. Now, it wasn't without me stripping half his wounds off him and all that kind of stuff, but, um, but yeah. So he ended up he ended up destroying it, uh, which is which is really awesome for him. Um, and and that was a good result. So the shadow sword was you know still pretty good, um, and and that's kind of the way the game went, guys. So I I was pretty stoked. Like I, I actually thought I had a good chance of winning, but I wasn't sure because like I know like what a good player Matty is. Um, so just lubricating the, the airbrush a bit with some water, just to be sure. I've already put thinner through it. Just just back feeding it a little bit with some water, you know, just lubricating it up a bit. And, um, and so but what I like to do is, guys, I think I mentioned it in my airbrush tutorial, um, I always like to just leave a little bit of water or uh, a little bit of thinner in there, just down the bottom, so it helps to, like, you know, f push the... Uh, push the, uh, the, 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 the paint through, you know? So yeah, he was, um, 
I, I managed to table him fairly fairly crazily in the first, first turn. Um, it was pretty nuts. I, I definitely think the chapter approved points changes make a big difference, especially to Marines, because honestly I had like a lot more in my squad than I ever would have had. And it was just like it probably, there was probably enough points changes there to have like an extra squad of like Devastators or something. And like that's huge. You know, like that's absolutely huge, you know. Um, but yeah, he, he did really well and, um, and he played it really well. And, uh, you know, we'll have another game soon. But that's how it went. So, yeah. So that, that's pretty much my list, guys. And, you know, how it kind of went there. Like that. Okay, that looks good. This consistency looks good. I just have to be very, very careful, though. Very careful. See, it's very, it's very runny, so I'm just going to be careful. And, um, yeah, so I was actually, I was honestly expecting him to to bring a little bit more to the table. Uh, I thought that the, there would be a lot more in the in terms of, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, there would be a lot more Lehman Russ. I thought there'd be a lot more Lehman Russ going on, um, but he didn't, he didn't actually bring many Lehman Russ, which is pretty crazy. Uh, so there are a lot of Chimeras though, um, and I managed to, I managed to completely annihilate um, his, his, what do you call it, um, his uh, heavy weapon squad straight away. He had like heaps of missile launchers and that. And I managed to like really smash them really well. So yeah. so for any of those of you who are interested, if you just notice what I'm doing here, I'm just going through, I'm just spraying back really far from the model um, because I just want to, you know, I want to get a nice good consistency and I want to try to keep as much as that pre-shading to come through as I can. Now I have I have seen a lot of noobs over Facebook. There was one guy I saw like um, he was in this uh, this group. It was like spaceship like builders or something, and there's usually some really awesome pro models in there. Um, but anyway, what this guy did, he went and he did a Millennium Falcon, right? And he he spent all this time pre shading it, and um, and then literally what happened was, is that he just put grey over it, he obviously has no idea how to pre-shade, and it was like, you can't even see the pre-shading, and I'm just like, oh my god, and then, you know, but I'm done, like, I don't comment in those groups anymore, guys, because what happens is, is like, you get all these, like, white knights and everything, and like, you know, I get, you know, you want to be positive, um, you know, like, you want to be positive to people, and everyone's got to... Uh, like a certain skill level, you know, they're different skill levels. But my my kind of philosophy is that like, oh, that's a bit strong. But lucky it was on the foot. But my my philosophy is is that um, you know, if I'm doing something wrong, I I want someone to like bring it up with me. You know, I want to say like, because I want to I want to constantly improve. You know, like on what I'm doing. Um, you know, so like, I mean, even right now, you know, if anyone's got any tips on like, you know, how to do this better, what I'm doing now, aside from maybe having this air unit on and then, uh, the window open, but I can't because it's like, I live in the city and there's all like, uh, trucks and that going past and stuff, you know, but, um, yeah, let me know if you've got any tips, but, uh, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm doing here and, uh, I think this is coming up quite well. And it makes sense with the feet. I think I've nailed that actually worked really well because uh, because there would be like a little bit more, you know, we, it's got to, there's gonna be paint there. I just want those areas to come out. Just be very careful. Like I said, you could do little swirls with the airbrush. Right, and there will there will be more light on the top people, right? So there will be there will, will be more light coming onto the model from the top. Um, and I have a, I have a very good friend there, uh, Sam. I don't want to mention your last name, Sam, because it's on YouTube if you're watching this, but you know who you are. And, uh, we went to college together and that, and he actually works on these really big Hollywood features and that, and he's a lighting artist and everything, as far as I know, I don't know, you might have changed it now, man, but last time I checked, you are in Canada working on mad stuff. But, um, so, yeah, he might be able to give some tips on lighting or some feedback on the lighting there. Um, but to me, it's like, you want to think about like where the lighting's hitting. 
right? So like, you know, this area is in shadow and then this area is the lights hitting it. So you just want that to sort of come through a little bit, you know? And uh, I think I'm sort of getting that. And the other, the other thing that you've got to realize is, now I'll pick it up from here, but it's okay because, um, sorry guys, I just really got to concentrate here. It's very important that I get this consistent because the problem is with this pre-shading stuff, guys, as unless you like go through and like redo the whole pre-shading again, if you stuff up, there's, there's no coming back from it. So, so you really want to be careful. Um, yeah. So anyway, I think that's looking pretty good. Um, I've got my color here and, uh, and I'll show you, I'll show you some pictures of, um, of the model because I've got the model, uh, there. I took some quick photos of it before I started pre-shading it. So I can show you that. Oh, and I need to be careful. I, I need to remember to get under his torso there. Uh, actually, I could pick him up from the, from the chain sword. Now, be very careful, very light, because I don't want to get too much on his heads. But I don't want it to be white. But if I do stuff up here, it's not going to kill me because, um, yeah. And I think a little bit here too. Yeah, so what I'm getting, I'm getting this really sweet, um, really sweet sort of like layering and blending effect. But the truth is, I'm not actually blending because it's all I'm doing is base coating over shading, right? So that's that's one of my little tricks there. It's no new trick, it's no, no crazy trick. Um, but I think there's a lot of people who who do it correctly, and then there's a lot of people who don't quite understand it. Um, but the, the trick is to get your the balance of the uh, of the model looking looking even. So just make sure you don't have like you know heaps of white left on one end, and then you know on the other end there's none. Um, and then like just pay attention to like where the areas would be more shiny and where they would be less shiny. Right, I'm just going through, just doing that. I'm gonna need a little bit more. But, here's the thing guys, so I wanna talk to you about something else too. Um, the trick is as well, with getting a really nice finish on your, on your, uh, your, your spraying, is that what you wanna do is you want to make sure that um, you don't go through and like do 10 layers at once, okay? What you got to do, you got to do like one layer. I think that's clean. <laughs> Hopefully my brush wasn't in it. Um, basically, you want to go through. You want to do like one layer first, and then you want to then you want to come back and then you want to do the other layer. Right. So you want to do one layer first, and then you then you want to give it let it dry for like should let it dry for like an hour actually. Um, but you know I'm pretty confident in my workflow. Um, so I will just go through and give it maybe 10 minutes or so, and then I'll, I'll hit the next, um, I'll hit, hit the next layer. Uh, what I could do actually in the meantime, uh, what I probably should do is maybe just start working on my base, uh, for the night while that dries. Uh, so I might just go through and flush this brush a little bit. Uh, actually, or I could just change brush, I don't know. Let me just expect the model a little bit. Yeah, so remember, you still can come and fix stuff. You still you still can come and fix things. You could come back in with a lighter blue as well, which might serve you well. Um, and you can you can do, definitely do that if you want. Which I think which I think I might actually do. Just very 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 lightly come in there with with a lighter shade of blue. But I don't know, because these these sort of shoulder pads are going to be... I'm going to do some checkered patterns and that on them anyway. So, no, nah, I don't know. I'm pretty happy with that. But I, I am going to fix up some areas just to get the consistency. So, hopefully, um, you can actually see that model in here. I don't even know if you can see the model. Um, but anyway, hopefully, you can see him. I can't actually see the camera from there. But anyway. So, yeah. So, I'm just going to look around the model. Um... You're going to need a little bit of love over here. So that area was a little bit too white. 
Uh, everything else is looking pretty good. Maybe that foot might need a little bit of love just to put it in a contrast with the rest of the feet. Uh, and then over here as well. Whoop. That's a bit of a tricky situation. Just grab him from his butt. Because whatever you do, you do not want to... Oh, man, that blue tack. Come on. That's all right. I got you. I got you, buddy. All right. So whatever, whatever you do, you, you don't want to go through and, um, and put too much on. And you want to keep the highlights going. But you want to be able to see the highlights. You know, you want, you want people to see it and say, oh man, like, you know, that's been shaded and stuff like that. So, and I'm, I'm pretty confident that this is coming out. Well, again, that's too much. It's the back. That's all right. It'll, I'll leave. Uh, maybe a little bit more here. All right. That's good now. That's good now. Okay. Yeah. And then maybe like a little bit more here. A little bit more here. No, that's, that's looking sweet. A little bit more here. Yep, okay, and then on the night itself, so these areas like the glove, they will be a little bit more shinier, so you'll go through and just, just yeah, but we don't want it too white, um, around here on the... Alright guys, so yeah, like, just uh, hopefully you can see that now, um, if I just zoom in a little bit and you can sort of see how that pre-shading uh, has worked. If I spin this thing around, um, you can see that it's blue, and you can see that like it's lighter in some areas, not so light in other areas. So I'm I'm faking the light um, up the top with it. So in my opinion, it's it's looking pretty boss, um, and it looks like I've I've gone through and I've I've added like all. But anyway, so it looks like I've gone through and I've added all these colors. But in actual fact, I haven't. Um, it's basically just been. Uh, it's it's basically just uh, yeah. It's just like uh, a base coat over shading. Now, just to let you know, so in real life, it's actually darker than this. It looks really light. Um, but actually, I might just try to take another photo of it. Give me one sec. Yeah, I can't actually see those photos yet. But um, but it's actually it's actually uh, darker in real life. A lot darker. So it's this really like nice dark, dark blue purple. Um, yeah, I'll try to I'll try to get a photo and uh, and stick it in the video or something. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And um, that's pre shading, guys. And uh, yeah, so there we go. I've killed two videos in one stone. Um, and look, I, I must say, I, I think that's looking pretty pop. Uh, you know, it's it's looking really really awesome. Like, can everybody see how I've got those shadows on there? You know, and like the darker areas where it would be in shadow and everything like that. Um, and we we're just going to keep moving from here, guys. We're just we're just going to keep moving on and uh, adding layers. And we might even come back and soften it up with another blue. But you know, to be honest, I, I don't think it needs it. And uh, a lot of this I'm going to be putting on the camouflage on anyway. So, uh, let's see if I just put it back there. It showed it as the original color. But hey, whatever. Look, it's darker. I'll take a photo. You will see. Okay? Uh, this camera just likes to light things up a lot, which is good. But, um, but yeah. All right, everybody. Look, I think I said all I had to say for this video. So, I'll go over now on my good old editing suite and um, edit this stuff up. I was uh, going to do some basing and record that, but... Uh, I don't think I will record it. I don't think I need to because I've got nothing really much else to talk about. I just took another photo by accident. Um, so what I will do is I will just, um, yeah, I might leave that for another video or whatever. All right, everybody, look, Stephen here, Command Center Wargaming. Fantastic. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you like my Ultramarines list. I'll see you in the next video. It's going to be fantastic. Um, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, we got like a prize draw going on where you can win a Calgar and also some hero, Space Marine heroes, individual models. Um, and thank you so much for all my current subscribers as well. Please, guys, if you have any feedback, 
for ideas for videos, let me know. Um, and yes, we I do have like a subscriber work I'm going to use. I'm going to do in a video, but I'm just sort of like waiting till I need like some content. Right now, like I got heaps of content, so it's kind of sorted. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next video.